Oceania and Geography is like the new kid on the block. Uh, we've always been doing uh, Florescene and Geography and OCT till now, and now you have this OCT and Geography, which is actually defining new depths uh, from what we've been seeing so far. The Florescene and Geography shows us the superficial plexus and shows us the superficial changes that happen in the, in the retinal vasculature, while the OCT and Geography shows us the deep uh, capillary plexus and and some of the changes which happen there are not seen that easily on the fluorescein and geography. And the OCT itself also just shows us anatomical changes, uh, but is not able to show us uh, the depth of the vasculature. So, so I think what OCT and geography does is complements um, at the moment what we see with uh, fluorescein and geography and OCT and geography. It doesn't replace it as yet. Uh, we don't know how far it goes and can be avoid doing a fluorescein and geography in the future for most things. But at the moment, it's a complementary uh, tool uh, which is bringing in new perspectives to how we image the retina. OCD angiography at the moment, uh, we use it mainly for wet AMD to look at uh, activity of the neovascular uh, membranes, new vessels which grow underlying. There are a lot of AMD cases where we are not sure whether to call it a, an active wet AMD uh, or sometimes uh, polypoidal choroidopathy. Sometimes uh, there is a lot of uh, variants of AMD which are leaking uh, and then we don't know uh, those just on the basis of fluorescein angiography or ICG angiography or OCT itself. So OCT angiography in a lot of these cases shows us uh, uh, actual vessels uh, growing underneath on basis of which uh, we've started thinking that maybe we should treat these patients instead of uh, being conservative. So I think it kind of differentiates some of these cases where we have a doubt uh, on the OCT itself. OCT angiography, as it has come, as I said, it's a new kid on the block. It still needs a lot of um, uh, you know upgrades to come in to take us to the next level. But as it comes, it, it, has, um, it only tells us very central fields. A 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four, uh, is, is the area which it kind of allows us to see in a good resolution. If we increase that area, uh, the resolution goes down. So we, we want to look at only that small area at the moment. But end of the day, we are used to seeing fluorescein angiography, which is wide field. Uh, and, and we are limited by this small field at this stage. So. Even now, some companies have started, uh, like NIDAC has started making a panoramic uh, OCT and geography, which what it does is that instead of losing resolution, it allows us to take a montage of uh, nine different three by threes and then combines it to give us a nine by 12. And then soon they're coming up with something which is 12 by 12, uh, which increases the field. And so I think um, as we get wider in uh, what we see on the OCT and geography, it would uh, replace fluorescein angiography more, you know, or, or make us um, see things what we are used to seeing with fluorescein angiography uh, much more easily. Because otherwise we are limited by uh, the small area that uh, it images. So we are uh, otherwise limited to that very small field. It has a lot of role. We can't rely on just uh, for very classic diagnosis. If the disease is presenting in its book form, uh, we can diagnose it maybe on the OCD itself, maybe on the fluorescein angiography itself, maybe just clinically. We don't need a test. We just see the fundus and say, oh, this is a case of a wet AMD and we need to give injections. Uh, but then uh, most diseases, as you know, don't read books. You know, they, the patients come to you with all kinds of uh, variables. So. So you need multiple levels of imaging. So you, you might do an OCT and you feel, oh, I, I'm not sure if there's fluid here. Should I still inject or not? So I like to do a fluorescein angiography. I'll do an angiography and see whether it's leaking or not. If it shows a leak, I may be inclined to uh, treat it. If it's not showing a leak, then I'll say, oh, OCT is doubtful. Angiography is not leaking. Then I'll do an OCT angiography. And, and maybe that shows a vessel which is active looking. And I might like to treat it. So I think multimodal image is all about um, taking you to the next level beyond clinical diagnosis. Uh, and, and it plays a huge role in, in the way things are. As eye surgeons, we, we can do very little with naked eyes. It, we need a lot of tools. And, and I think this is exactly OCT, fluorescein, OCT angiography, ICG angiography. Uh, all these uh, make up for uh, finally reaching to the right diagnosis uh, at present.
there's a lot of imaging stuff like we talked about OCT and geography, there's sessions on that. And the other thing, I, I'm more of a surgeon, so I, I, I'm looking at the new 3D um, ingenuity stuff, which you know the Alcon has in its machine. Now they're adding this whole new visualization system to for us to operate. Um, so I think that there are talks on those, there are sessions on those. And uh, I've done some demos on that so far, so I want to know more about how everybody is approaching it and, and, and how everybody uh, thinks it's heading towards uh, so that it we also need to make decisions on how we move ahead with how we do our surgery or how we visualize the cases during surgery, yeah. Mm -hmm.